400 kilometers. That is the distance Russia claims for its R-37 MEN missile, a range that seems almost unreal when compared to the weapons fielded by other air forces. Imagine a missile able to strike an aircraft so far away that the pilot who launches it may never even see the target on his radar screen until the guidance computer takes over. Imagine a weapon designed not for duels at close range, but for killing the eyes, ears, and fuel lines of an enemy air campaign before the dogfight even begins. The Kremlin has called it the ace up its sleeve, the longest reaching air-to-air -air missile in the world. But is this missile the revolution its designers promise, or is it a product that sounds invincible only on paper? To understand the R-37M, you have to go back to the late Cold War, when the Soviet Union built its air defense doctrine around interceptors rather than stealth fighters. In the 1980s, Soviet engineers at the Vimple Design Bureau created the R-33, a missile carried on the MiG-31 Foxhound. The goal was simple. Give the USSR a way to shoot down America's heavy bombers, AWACS surveillance planes, and aerial refueling tankers before they could coordinate a strike deep into Soviet territory. These were the targets that mattered, because without AWACS to control the air battle and without tankers to extend their range, Western fighters would lose their edge long before they reached the front lines. The MiG-31 was built with a massive radar to detect such aircraft at long range, and the R-33 was built to kill them. Yet technology did not stand still, and when the Soviet Union collapsed, the missile was already showing its age. In the years that followed, Russia's military fell into crisis, projects stalled, and funding dried up. But the idea of a very long-range interceptor missile never vanished. By the early 2000s, as Moscow rebuilt its defense industry, Vimple relaunched the program, and the result was the R-37M. This new version was not just a cosmetic update, it was longer, faster, and more sophisticated, with a much larger envelope of potential targets. By 2014, it was officially declared in service, but only after 2018 did it complete the operational trials that allowed deployment in real numbers. The MiG-31BM became its natural host platform, a machine whose speed, altitude, and radar power gave the missile its full potential. Later, the Su-35 and the Su-57 were certified to carry it as well, expanding its reach across Russia's fighter fleet. The missile itself is enormous by modern standards, stretching 4 meters long and weighing over half a ton. That size makes it unsuitable for lightweight fighters but perfect for heavy interceptors and multi-role platforms with strong engines. Its design follows a classic aerodynamic layout with mid-body wings and folding tail fins, allowing it to fit under fuselages and be launched smoothly. At the moment of release, a catapult ejects it downward before the solid rocket motor ignites, sparing the launching aircraft from strain. Once the motor burns, the missile accelerates to hypersonic speed, Mach 5 or Mach 6 depending on altitude, closing the distance at terrifying pace. Could a defending pilot even react in time if he were suddenly warned of such a missile inbound from hundreds of kilometers away? Guidance is layered, combining inertial navigation in the early phase with data link corrections from the launching aircraft. As it approaches the target, the missile switches on its active radar seeker, a system capable of locking onto a target with the radar cross-section of a medium fighter at distances of around 40 kilometers. From this point, the missile is fire and forget, no longer tied to the survival of the launching aircraft. It continues autonomously until impact, carrying a 60-kilogram fragmentation warhead. Large enough to shred an AWACS or tanker, it remains deadly against fighters or even helicopters. The message is obvious. If you are flying anywhere near the battle space and you are a high-value aircraft, you are at risk. And then comes the famous figure, 300 to 400 kilometers. Moscow insists that under ideal conditions, a R-37M launched at high altitude against a slow, non-maneuvering target could kill from that distance. Against fast and agile fighters, the realistic engagement range is closer to 200 to 250 kilometers. Still, this puts it far beyond NATO's AIM-120D or even Europe's Meteor missile, which max out at roughly 150 to 200 kilometers. Only the still-in-development AIM-260 JATM is expected to rival it, and that will not arrive until at least 2026.
So for the moment, Russia can claim it has the longest stick in the air-to-air -air fight. But does a long stick guarantee victory, or can tactics, countermeasures, and doctrine blunt its edge? On the battlefield in Ukraine, the R-37M has seen its first real use. Since late 2022, MiG-31s flying from Russian bases have launched these missiles regularly, with reports suggesting several shots fired per day. Ukrainian pilots have confirmed losses of Su-27s and possibly MiG-29s to these weapons. In one case in October 2022, Russian media claimed a Su-57 stealth fighter scored its first kill using an R-37M against a Ukrainian Su-27 at long range. Western intelligence, including a British Ministry of Defense assessment in January 2023, observed that Russia was not just using the missile to kill, but to suppress. By firing them without perfect locks, they saturated the airspace, forcing Ukrainian fighters to change behavior. Pilots were driven to fly lower, keep radars off, and avoid extended patrols. Did every missile hit? No. Many failed due to jamming, evasion, or poor target lock. But in war, sometimes the impact is not measured only in kills, but in how the enemy is forced to adapt. This raises an uncomfortable truth for NATO planners. Even if the R-37M does not always succeed, its presence changes the equation. If you are flying an AWACS, a J-STARS surveillance jet, or an aerial refueling tanker, would you risk operating within 300 kilometers of a MiG-31 patrol? If you are a Rafale or Eurofighter pilot, do you climb high to maximize your radar, knowing you might appear on a MiG-31 scope and invite a missile from beyond your own ability to respond? The R-37M does not need a 100% kill rate to be effective. It simply needs to make the skies feel smaller, to deny freedom of movement, and to force NATO to protect its most valuable assets more cautiously. Technically, the missile has other impressive features. Its seeker is resistant to electronic countermeasures compared to older Russian designs. Its data link allows mid-course updates, keeping it on track even against maneuvering targets. Reports even suggest a missile-to-missile -missile communication feature that lets salvos coordinate, increasing kill probability. Yet for all its sophistication, the missile still depends heavily on the radar of the launch aircraft. The MiG-31's massive phased array set is ideal, but Su-35s or Su-30s cannot match its range, limiting missile performance. Take the MiG-31s out of the picture, and much of the R-37M's potency vanishes. Operational limits also matter. MiG-31s can carry four R-37Ms. Su-35s can carry more, but doing so cuts into fuel and other weapons. Heavy size means fewer missiles, and fewer missiles mean fewer chances in a fight. Moreover, the missile's long reach is partly a paper figure. Against fighters actively trying to survive, the real envelope is narrower. Western electronic warfare is more advanced than Ukraine's, raising questions about how the R-37M would perform against NATO aircraft. Would it still force AWACS to stay back, or would jamming, stealth, and counter-tactics blunt its reach? No one truly knows, because such a clash has never happened. Western equivalents give a clue. The European Meteor, built by MBDA, uses ramjet propulsion to sustain energy throughout its flight, making it agile even at the endgame. Its maximum range is shorter than the R-37M, but its probability of kill may be higher thanks to better terminal performance. The AIM-120D, America's current standard, falls short in range, but is combat-proven and backed by a networked engagement doctrine. And the AIM-260JATM, still in testing, promises to leap ahead. The philosophies differ. Russia favors saturation at long range, even if accuracy suffers. The West prefers fewer shots with greater precision, relying on AWACS and networks to create decisive firing opportunities. Which approach is superior? The answer may depend not on the missile itself, but on the war it is used in. There are darker rumors as well. Analysts, including some at the U.S. Defense Intelligence Agency, have speculated that the R-37M might one day carry a nuclear warhead reviving a Cold War concept where long-range air-to-air missiles were designed to wipe out bomber formations with one blast. The Soviet Union experimented with such weapons decades ago, and while no nuclear variant of the R-37M has been confirmed, even the suggestion of one alters perceptions. 
Would NATO ever risk flying large strike packages if a single missile could detonate among them with catastrophic effect? Nuclear tipped or not, the R-37M serves as a reminder that Russia still thinks in terms of grand strategic disruption, not just tactical skirmishes. Looking ahead, the missile is expected to evolve further. Reports hint at an R-37M2, potentially optimized for internal carriage on the Su-57, allowing Russia's stealth fighter to bring four of these weapons into combat without sacrificing radar signature. Integration with more advanced seekers, improved data links, and better resistance to jamming are also likely. In this sense, the R-37M is not the end of a line, but the continuation of a concept born in the Cold War. Destroy the enemy's ability to coordinate and sustain air operations before they can bring their numbers to bear. So how should we judge the R-37M today? It is not a miracle missile. It cannot guarantee kills at 400 kilometers, nor can it transform every Russian fighter into an invincible platform. It has limits, and in a clash with Western forces, those limits would matter. But it is coherent within Russia's doctrine. It denies the enemy confidence, forces caution, and erodes the advantage of expensive, high-value assets. That is what makes it powerful, and that is why even if its performance is sometimes exaggerated, it remains one of the most consequential missiles in the world. In conclusion, the R-37M is a paradox. On the one hand, it has been overhyped, with Russian sources inflating its effectiveness. On the other hand, it has already reshaped air combat in Ukraine by forcing adversaries to adapt their tactics. For AWACS, for tankers, and even for fighters like the Rafale, it is not just a missile but a shadow that follows them into the sky. And in modern war, sometimes the shadow of a weapon is as influential as the weapon itself. Thanks for watching. If you want to stay updated on the world's most advanced missiles, the evolving doctrines of Russia and NATO, and the shifting balance of air power, don't forget to subscribe.